We've all heard the news, we've all read the articles about the decline of Christianity in North America. And it's scary. People are leaving the church in record numbers. It seems like almost every month there's some new article to further scare us. Wheaton professor Rick Richardson has studied that data and he wants to change the way we respond to it. He says, too often, our response is one of panic and a loss of hope. Like Chicken Little, we think the sky is falling. In his 2019 book, You Found Me, Richardson shows us first, there are some encouraging signals within the data. And second, he proposes ways in which churches can respond positively. He starts by exposing four myths. America is becoming a nation of nuns. Millennials are forsaking the church and will never return. The church in America will disappear in a generation. Trust in the church is at an all-time low. Richardson shows us that all four of these are actually untrue. And when we buy into these myths, we develop a sky is falling mentality, which leads to withdrawal. There are many statistics indicating that we as Christians have sort of given up on evangelism. He proposes a new narrative, one that understands that receptivity to invitations and openness to spiritual discussions is much higher than we may believe. For example, our thinking about millennials needs to change. Contrary to some assumptions, very few millennials have a negative view of Christianity. And although many of them do stop attending church in their 20s, significant percentages return later. There's even cause for hope among the famous nuns, especially when we dissect them. Agnostic nuns and atheistic nuns are indeed often hostile toward Christianity, but the others, the sort of true nuns, are not. One of the strongest signals found in the research is the receptivity of African Americans and Hispanic Americans. Both of these groups are open to returning to church at significant and encouraging rates. Richardson then turns his attention to the church. He calls a church that responds to this new narrative a conversion community. And he says that type of community is created by two things, missional leaders and a missional congregation. For missional leaders, the key is modeling outreach that others can imitate. For example, if a pastor isn't inviting people to know Jesus, then why would we expect a congregation to be? Developing missional leaders beyond just pastors and staff requires intentionality. It doesn't happen by accident. It requires systems, systems like the ones described in the book Designed to Lead by Eric Geiger and Kevin Peck. The other part of a conversion community is a missional congregation. Richardson says this comes by putting together a process of four B words. Belong, bless, bring, beloved. For the first one, belong, he means belonging to the larger community. How can we reach those around us if we never engage with them? We need to find creative ways to build bridges between our churches and our communities. By blessing, he means integration of two things, compassion and gospel proclamation. We should not dichotomize between blessing people physically and blessing people spiritually. Those things need to be done together.
And what does that look like? Well, Richardson points to what unchurched people would say. They would like to see treating people better, caring for people's needs, standing against injustice, multiple races together. That's blessing the community. Bringing is deceptively simple. It's about personal invitation. All of the church needs to extend personal invitations. If we are in relationship with our community and blessing them, people are surprisingly receptive to an invitation to church. And building a community that is beloved, what's the key to that? Hospitality. Welcoming the outsider, the stranger, is essential. Richardson goes further and identifies something he calls biblical hospitality, which is developing a place where the unchurched and the non-Christian feel welcomed. Richardson wraps it up with a fun historic example. From the late 1700s to the mid-1800s, there was one denomination that experienced rapid growth, the Methodists. And he shows that the Methodists were built on principles that very closely aligned with his conversion community. <music>